welcome everyone let us start uh, and before maybe getting on to the book reading let's take a moment of silence All right, so again, welcome to those who joined now. So we'll start, we are on page number nine. And uh, I think last time we were able to take only these lines because there was a big discussion on this, which is very good, I believe. It's good to go very slowly one by one through all these lines. And let's maybe take a overlap from this paragraph and then we will take up the new one today and maybe the full to make sense yes would anyone like to read i'll read monica yeah please in psychological fact this method translates itself into the progressive surrender of the ego with its whole field and all its apparatus to the beyond ego with its vast and incalculable but always inevitable workings. There are three outstanding features of this action of the higher when it works integrally on the lower nature. In the first place, it does not act according to a fixed system and succession as in the specialized methods of yoga, but with sort of free, scattered and yet gradually intensive and purposeful working determined by the temperament of the individual in whom it operates, the helpful material which his nature offers and the obstacles which it presents to purification and perfection. In a sense, Therefore, each man in this path has his own method of yoga. Yet, are there certain broad lines of working common to all which enable us to construct not indeed a routine system, but yet some kind of Shastra or scientific method of the synthetic yoga? Yeah, thank you. So... I think last time we did uh, start to touch upon this that uh, it's beautiful in integral yoga that there is although as Shorabindu shares there are like a bit of uh, common points but each individual has its own yoga it, it's like an unfolding of uh, the discipline of yoga in my life and there are no uh, formulas here so one cannot use just one formula and apply it to everyone. One, you know, that's why no concrete answers, and the answers would depend upon who is the person who is asking. You know, as we read in letters of uh, Sri Aurobindo, which he has written to the sadhaks. So, in each context, the answer would be different. More or less, uh, I would say the lines are the same as Sri Aurobindo shares here. That uh, yet are there certain broad lines. I think just as a reference, what are these certain broad lines? For example, 
one broad line is uh, becoming desireless. Now that is something you can't uh, avoid if one is on the path of integral yoga. You know, so one cannot say that, no, 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 you have your own path of integral yoga, I have my own and I can, I can live with desires. So that would be like a bit of suffering for us. I think all of us, uh, those who have tasted it would resonate that on one half, one a higher is calling in the a, a part of being wants to rise to higher. And yet we are also, you know, maybe giving in to the desires again and again. So it creates a kind of a turmoil in the being. So uh, certain broad lines can be, again, just sharing uh, what I feel about it, that, for example, purification. Now, your uh, discipline in yoga may be different, my unfolding may be different, but no one can avoid purification. All of us have to get rid of ill will, develop a good heart, you know, uh, no gossiping, no judgments. So these are common broad, broad lines. But then the specifics are very unique according to the Swabhava. For example, how can they be unique that to some of the sadhaks, mother said, do meditation. Sit uh, for some time. To others, mother uh, did not ask for meditation. Mother asked for an active life. You know, to some, uh, mother put, it, put them in such places where maybe my education is biology and she is putting me in maths something like that but to some she is using their educational background you know uh, making that nurture possible so again you know this is how it becomes specific and the common broad lines are the aspect of purification the aspect of vigilance you know how we have to be vigilant of our thoughts feelings entering not giving into the negative loops you know uh, again disidentification from the surface consciousness identification with the true self so these are common broad lines, we can say, and then there are unique unfoldings, which would be very specific, very unique, depending upon the swabhava of each uh, sadhak. So mother uh, here, you know, I think it's Shri Aurobindo he shares, there are three outstanding features of this action of higher when it works integrally, transforming each part of the being on the lower nature, the lower referring to the surface mental, the surface vital, which are the surface feelings associated with the ego consciousness, all that goes up and down and up and down, and the sense perceptions, opinions, ideas, dogmas, rigidities of the mind. So that's all lower and the physical. In the first place, it does not act according to a fixed system and succession as in the specialized methods of yoga. Again, we touched upon that last time that just like in kundalini it is said that it rises from below upwards but in this case integral yoga the safe way uh, is from top down and we don't know which opening is to happen first you know so the, there is no succession that okay the topmost and then here and then here nothing like that maybe the heart opens first you know who knows so not according to a fixed system and succession as in specialized methods of yoga but with a sort of free scattered and yet gradually intensive and purposeful working so there is a purpose behind whatever is opening first determined by the temperament of the individual in which in whom it operates the helpful materials which his nature offers the helpful materials which his nature offers. So somebody may be more into devotion, you know, and one may start with the opening of the heart, you know, devotion, emotions. Some may be more in the mind, the intellect. You know, so there we may start from, you know, uh, the upper half. The helpful materials which his nature offers and the obstacles which is which it presents to the purification and perfection so they all are taken care of what is the as mother says in education when she talks about we take it from near to far what the child is good at we nurture those capacities and then slowly we take him to far you know like maybe i'm not good at maths but i'm good at biology so nurturing biology and uh, also 
giving exposure to maths. I'm just taking a very basic trivial example. In a sense, therefore, each man in this path has his own method of yoga. Yet are there certain broad lines of working common to all, as we shared earlier, which enable us to construct not indeed a routine system, which like, you know, blindly I can follow. It's nothing like that not indeed a routine system but yet some kind of a shastra or scientific method of synthetic yoga so we can say that it's mother has given for example shirobindu have given us tools you know what are aspiration opening to grace surrender rejection these are nothing but tools vigilance sincerity these are the tools which are the certain you know basic broad lines on which we can kind of you know, when we have a don't have a map at hand we have pointers so these are the pointers which are very helpful to go forward yeah so inviting reflections uh, on this paragraph if anyone has I have a question actually, you know, in the last uh, sentence, yet are there certain broad, like, is this a question? Like, why is it not yet there are, I mean, you know, there, what is? I have yeah, no even I, Yeah, I mean, I stumbled there, even yeah. I was wondering. I think it's all, as a matter of speaking, you know, you can say, yet are there, you know, something like that. So it, nothing really <laughs> for us to yeah but it's interesting because we i i believe that i personally can't really understand shiorobindo's english that much because he has you know such an extensive knowledge and he uses things in a way which personally i can't fathom so no idea why yet there are and yet are there no idea yeah thank you no need to go there So um, I just wanted to uh, talk about a bit about a uh, uh, little bit that I know of, you know, about the Kundalini that, that, that was just talked about by you. Uh, when we say that the Kundalini opens from below upwards and uh, the integral yoga, you know, we, the divine power from up down and then whichever chakra needs to be open or whatever centers need to be open, they will open on their own. Now, just a little, what I have understood, you know, that Kundalini is not the same as the chakra. Even in the Kundalini yoga, Kundalini is the Shakti, the power, the latent energy, which lies latent. Janmo, janmo tak wo soi hui hai, hamare andar. And it is, at Kundalini yoga says that it is present like, a, you know, the coiled serpent, two and a half coils and whatever, at the tip of the spine, somewhere around that point. Now, to open up the Kundalini and the, for the, for, uh, to awaken that, that latent power is not the initial thing to happen. It is one of the, you know, uske liye bohat yog sadhna karni padegi, shayad kisi ki Kundalini jagrit hoti hogi. But, Chakra is different. Again, the seven chakras that we talk about, starting from the base of the spine, you know, up, 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 right up till the Sahasrara, you know. These chakras, even in Kundalini Yoga, can open, any of the chakras can open any which ways. A person can have its root chakra blocked and heart chakra yet open. You know, it might be a very giving person, but yet not be so stable in life, you know, and because the root, the very basis, the Aadhaar of our existence, that is what the chakra, you know, science talks about. So, wo ho sakta hai kisi ki band ho, but zaruri nahi hai ki upar ke chakra bhi band honge. Koi aur chakra khule ho sakte hai, jab ye sare chakra khul jayenge, hum apne yog sadhna se ya jaysi bhi, jab hum apne hi limitations se, 
अपने ही लिमिटेड एग्जिस्टेंस से जब हम ऊपर उठ जाएंगे अपने ही लिमिटेड सोच से जिसके थ्रू यू नो वी लिविंग लाइफ बिकॉज वी आर अंडर द ग्रिप ऑफ आर सब कॉन्शियस वॉट एवर इज देयर is determining how we perceive things in the outside world how we think how we react act or whatever to so, anger hai fear hai greed hai lust hai uh, desires hain dukh hai sab cheeze hain uh, dabe hue emotions hain to ye sab hamare limitations hai aur ye har chakra ka apna ek ek kaam hai jahan ek certain uh, ek certain latent energy ko awaken karta hai but we have to work on them only when all the chakras when we are able to you know clear all that kachras within ourselves those those uh, limitations each of these chakra we have to work on when they get awakened they say according to the kundalini side the left and the right half of the body you know they say that left may female energy right ira and pingala nari when these two naris are in harmony in balance and in medical science we call the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system one is action one is calmness to jab ye dono cheeze balance mein ho jati hain to hi hamari central channel awaken hoti hai to kundalini mein bhi yahi hai ki jab woh chakra sare ke sare jab awaken ho jayenge to hamari ira aur pingla jo energy system hai wo balance hogi to hi central channel jaise jo shushumna nadi wahan pe jo uske lower most part mein jo taakat ta, uh, you know the power hai latent energy that will rise up so uh, this was a just a little bit which i have kind of read a lot and i don't say that i know everything uh, but little bit i thought i should kind of talk about it because uh, let's not say that in kundalini yoga it happens always from the kundalini rises from below upwards but the chakras can open any which ways according to the nature and as we work and whatever so just this monica thank you thank you so much thank you so i think uh, those those of us who are interested in chakras and kundalini shri aurobindo has written in letters on yoga very detailed uh, you know uh, description and even what i just shared that it's a safe mother says that our yoga is a safe yoga because you don't don't get stuck at the lower levels is only uh, because mother says this and it feels resonating to me that why do i bother to open yeah. up the chakras yeah yeah true true yeah. <laughs> true yeah. but uh, we, i think it's very interesting field so thank you for bringing it up and we can read about it with shorobindo he has written about everything on the earth possible even yeah. tantra and all that so yeah yeah, yeah. good for yeah. us interested ones we can read thank you thank you thank for bringing it up Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. I am sorry. I would also like to say, please, please, yeah, yeah. you know, in the in lot of texts of ancient masters and mystics, you know, there are lot of, you know, these things that how do we know that one has surpassed, or how do we know that one has accomplished? You know, I always, whenever you know, I used to read those with my father. I always had this thing that why do I want to know? Why don't I just focus on what needs to be done and rather than seeing okay check oh, no no not there hai. third point check i mean like priyanka so beautifully shared that okay you know one has to clear the chakras by looking at say the resistances the upholds and stuff i personally again like it said to each his own it's the other approach is equally true if i don't get lost in the terminologies and the aims of clearing the chakras and if i'm just working on myself with you know wanting purity truth perfection i think the other things happen by themselves and this to me feels much simpler because then there are no do's no don'ts no you know this is the sound of this chakra and i mean that just it used to appeal me when you know coming from that intellectual analytical brain and now it just seems like another burden that i don't need to carry anymore like the path is there you know like even now we say the naam japa right like what can be simpler than that or just remembering that you know i love the mother and the mother loves me and spending the whole day with all activities with this constantly in you this is such a 
simpler it seems like such a simpler way to be then focusing on you know the do's and don'ts because i feel that again divisive and we being who we are we complicate things so i understand that aspect but i don't understand this and what if we have to understand nothing so just wanted to share that it, it makes me a bit skeptical if i get too much into the do's and don'ts because a very simpler sadhana feels like is my possibility yeah thank you yeah yeah actually there are so many blind alleys one can get lost anywhere so yes we don't know <laughs> each one has its own experiences and through them we grow absolutely yeah but if it can be simpler why not take the simple path why to make it so complicated yes. yeah but that as you know sri aurobindo says that each one would have his own uh, unfolding in the yoga so one may actually out of interest some may get very attracted and inclined towards the kundalini and the chakras and all that and may take start from there but ultimately the simplicity has to come because uh, it's it's not complicated as we as, as the mind makes it complicated so i think even if we start from that owing to the swabhava of a person who may get attracted to this uh truth is only one <laughs> so we are safe you know all of us are safe yeah glad glad to you know have only one truth <laughs> okay so shall we is it okay if we go ahead a bit so this is uh, we we all know that it's although the book is named integral healing this is just like a base is getting developed about integral yoga and how we why are we here you know what are we doing here uh we will we are going to start on the disease and illness part very soon so let us take this next paragraph anyone who would feel ready to read please unmute taru you want to go ahead yeah secondly the process being integral accepts our nature such as it stands organized by our past evolution and without rejecting anything essential compels all to undergo a divine change everything in us is seized by the hands of a mighty artificer and transformed into a clear image of that which it now seeks confusedly to present in that ever progressive experience we begin to perceive how this lower manifestation is constituted and that everything in it however seemingly deformed or petty or vile is the more or less distorted or imperfect figure of some element or action in the harmony of the divine nature So I think we start with a complete acceptance. This is how I am. I am full of desires. I am full of expectations. I am very, very sticky. I am mostly in the surface consciousness, and all this is accepted by the integral yoga. The process, as Sri Aurobindo says, the process being integral. it wants to work on each and every part nothing has to be left in shadow accepts our nature such as it stands organized by our past evolution whatever conditioning i may have whatever lifetimes i may have you know earlier past evolution and without rejecting anything essential nothing essential is rejected compels all to undergo a divine change so jaise kehte hai na in the in the eyes of the divine 
all are equals so the mind the feelings the intellect the body all are at the same ground you know in the eyes of the divine they are like one can say children of the divine each one has to be worked upon now someone may be very evolved in the intellect and the heart may be not that open okay accept it you know let us start from there someone may be very devoted but the intellect may be not that developed there are uh, many of us you know that uh, very too much of devotion but the mind is not that capable of the vastness and you know that intellect and even one can say philosophization mind is not that developed and yet we can start from there so at just like we say we can start either from the bhakti mark you know the karma karma yoga or the gyan yoga any path and these are all united in the beginning it seems i am approaching from three different ends but if we see bhakti is blind without wisdom so bhakti is intertwined with gyan yoga it's only on the surface that it seems that you know uh, they are different and even karma yoga you know karma yoga is not possible if you don't have bhakti and wisdom the gyan yoga so it's like as if they are all intertwined within each other and yet there are a bit of differences depending upon our natural inclinations that i first begin with bhakti and then move into more wisdom and you know, intelligence so no part of us to be rejected all the weaknesses all the uh, qualities they are all taken care of accepted as as a whole integral being integral and then he says everything in us is seized by the hands of a mighty artificer and transformed into a clear image of that which it now seeks confusedly to present so i think this uh, cannot happen if not for even a bit of a surrendering some part of us have to has to surrender that okay i am now ready to get molded the molding is anyway happening through nature's movements you know that's a different task and it is already in the hands of the mighty artificer but here we are talking of the active process of integral yoga so everything in us each part of my being the mind the thoughts the feelings you know the body the limitations of the body is seized by the hands of a mighty artificer somebody is now looking at me whole you know like you look an artist looks at a big rock and he has to now design something out of that rock you know, some deity some murti or something so the mighty artificer is just like as if looking at this piece of big rock that is there at at places there are sharp edges at places there is more round you know he is looking where what can happen where and transformed into a clear image of that which it now seeks confusedly to present so it seems like again i'm just uh, giving my thoughts here and feel free to share that whatever one the soul wants to express out uh, to present at the moment that will be taking place you know that transformation a clear image of that will be slowly developing in us each one of us is a different uh, form and in that ever progressive experience we begin to perceive how this lower manifestation is constituted and that everything in it now when we talk of lower manifestation the surface vital uh, the surface up and down movements of feelings thoughts you know, and then there is inner vital inner mental which is more in touch with the divine consciousness you know, which is more full of divine qualities but which shorobindo uses many terminologies i don't want to confuse us here so i am not going to go into detail you know, because it will just take us somewhere else but there is a there are divine parts of us parallelly and there are surface parts of us which develop from the physical consciousness so first came the body from body came the feelings and then it developed into mind so that's why we call human being is a mental being you know it has developed mental 
uh, capacities. So all this can be taken as the lower, which is coming out of the body. Lower manifestation is constituted and that everything in it, however seemingly deformed or petty or vile, is, is the more or less distorted or imperfect figure of some element of or action in the harmony of the divine nature. So as we say that in the story of creation, everything turned in its opposite. So if there is suffering in my life, I'm just giving an example, which can be called lower. Suffering is a distorted form of bliss. If there is ignorance in my life, which can be called lower. Ignorance is a distorted form of wisdom energy, intelligence. But one is not able to see on the surface, you know, how can ignorance be distorted wisdom? So yeah, these are my few thoughts here. Yeah, anyone wants to go ahead. Yeah, just a small uh, thought that, you know, it's like how when you start seeing, you start seeing how things work. Right? Like how if I am about to now grasp at something new, sometimes you are able to see, okay, now this will lead to that and probably that will lead to this. And this seemingly innocent re outreach, what is this leading to or what could it lead to? So maybe you stop the grasp, right? So just this, that how you are able to see how everything is working, what is covered by what, you know, what is hidden by hidden. And the beginning also itself, you know how mother says that I don't look at your flaws or your faults. I just look at your potential and how each of us have that potential, right? Like there's not a single one who doesn't. So again, that's also very, I don't know, loving and assuring. And when you talk about acceptance, right? That yes, I accept. And now I change, right? Because I'm, if I keep denying, if we talk to anybody, say even a small child, right? If we say, okay, you know, you're doing this. Do, and if he just keeps rejecting that, no, I am not. Then the work cannot begin. Right? So just this acceptance also seems like such a beautiful thing that I know. And, you know, we see those faces in us, right? Those differences that, you know, part of me wants to grasp and another part of me is smiling. You know, when you see the whole thing, when it's like you don't have to identify with anything and yet you have that tendency to that you have to hold back. So yeah, just that, that it's nice if one is able to slowly, slowly see what is working and how. Yeah, and I think uh, one thing which came to me while you were sharing, when one is able to see one's weaknesses, you know, when, when one is able to see, okay, I am at this, you know, uh, in term of whatever, one can, anything can be observed in the being. So I see that, okay, this is right now where I am. But parallelly, one, see, one also sees the seeing the aspect that you were talking of, that I don't have to remain here forever. I think this aspect of the light of consciousness that we have, which can see which one is dark, which was in, which is impure, which is pure thought, which is a negative thought, which is a positive thought. I think this is what we have to, you know, this like a blessing that we have within us, what we call divine consciousness and how we actually take it for granted. <laughs> you know, that, Are ye to sabke saath hota hai, you know, you can see it so we don't even know what capacity we have that we can look at our own flaws, which is uh, so amazing because if we have that capacity, then we can also transcend those flaws and we don't have to keep defending them. So yeah, just came when you were sharing the aspect of seeing. Yeah. yeah anything else? Anyone? Monica, I needed one clarity in one line. Mm -hmm. This line that everything in us is seized by the hands of the mighty artificial and transformed into a clear image of that which it now seeks. So what is this it? Is it the soul in man? 
yeah i think uh, you can refer it to the divine mighty artificer or the soul in man but right now he says that it is presenting in a distorted form so mm -hmm. what is the distortion through my ego consciousness bliss becomes suffering mm -hmm. that's the distortion which is seeks confusedly to present but now it now that is it is the in the hands of mighty mighty artificial like consciously we are collaborating it will be transformed into a clear image which at the moment it is like you know a distorted image it's not a clear image so the as we see that shorbindo says that the soul puts this pressure from inside of evolution and it it wants to manifest something the example one example can be uh, for example my child you know once he was very little and he said that he was drawing and he said that mummy i my fingers are not listening to what my mind is saying <laughs> you know so that's the distortion that is happening yeah the mind has a beautiful image in the head but my fingers since the physical consciousness and neurosensorial development you know still taking place mm -hmm. they are not copying the image yeah. so i believe that it's uh, hinting us to that i don't know that the image that soul consciousness may have you know as taru was sharing that mother says that i don't look at your flaws i look at your potential so the soul consciousness is that full potential it wants to express itself out but then there is a curtain so whatever expresses it expresses through that curtain and gets distorted so we we see naughty children you know and we just label them naughty for example what is it happening what is one of the ideas where i see here is that uh, you know the child has so much of energy creative energy but since he doesn't know how to channel it so it gets distorted and it becomes naughtiness for example you know and if we need teachers who are learners themselves who can recognize this potential of the child and channel that energy which is now at the moment going into naughtiness into something which is a natural inclination of the child maybe art music i don't know running sports right oh very beautiful thank you thank you yeah anything more anyone so we come to the third point thirdly would anyone like to read i'll read thirdly the divine power in us uses all life as the means of this integral yoga every experience and outer contact with the with our world environment however trifling or however disastrous is used for the work and every inner experience even to the most repellent suffering or the most humiliating fall becomes a step on the path to perfection thank you so much what a beautiful paragraph <laughs> beautiful yeah. i mean what can one say after reading this no chai hab left jao chai right jao cha seedha me mu maro chai kahi mat jao you know such is the certitude yeah that's there yeah so jo bhi ho raha hai anything that is happening in our life whatever is all for our own perfection mm -hmm. so the divine is creating that situation for us to transcend our own limitations mm -hmm. yeah yeah and often we get stuck thinking ki ye mere sath kyu hua aate hai ye soch bhi ki aisa kyu hua You know, but पता नहीं इससे भी क्या हो सकता था 
जो नहीं हुआ वो हमें पता ही नहीं होता और जो हुआ हमें लगता वही सबसे बुरा है क्या पता कुछ और होना था और शायद ये हुआ जो इतना बुरा है नहीं शायद दिमाग में आते है कि क्या पता जो नहीं हुआ वो तो पता ही नहीं तो ये भी अच्छा ही हुआ अमिताभ बच्चन की एक सॉरी एक कोई लाइन थी कि मैंने कहीं सुनी थी कि जब तुम्हारी मर्जी की हो तो बहुत अच्छा और जब तुम्हारी मर्जी की ना हो तो और भी अच्छा क्योंकि वो फिर उसकी मर्जी की होती है सो इट इज यू नो हमें अपनी मर्जी की चीजें होती है तो अच्छा ही लगता है बट इट वॉज वेरी नाइस वेरी आई मीन आई स्टिल रिमेम्बर इट इट वॉज मोर ब्यूटिफुली दर्ड वे यूज मोर ब्यूटिफुली मोर इम्पैक्टफुली बट मुझे ऐसे ही याद है कि अगर इफ हमारी मर्जी की नहीं होती है तो फिर इट इज गॉड की मर्जी एंड it's so nice if we could see it that way and accept it and life would become simpler yeah and at least we can try it you know it's not easy mm. more easy to say but yes mm-hmm. yeah yeah anything anyone wants to share further actually i'm just basking in these lines these are really very very powerful so i i believe it's like almost as mother shares in prayers and meditations you know it's like a fail safe path that we are all on the thing is still reading these lines one can say okay if right now i am suffering let me continue to suffer so we don't realize that uh, the divine is not sitting somewhere separate from all of us or me because the moment i say the divine is something separate from me i am making the divine finite kyunki wo dur mere se tabhi hoga jab wo wo kuch itna hai aur main kuch alag hu you know i am this much limited and then there is one being who is sitting away from me no matter how huge he may be but he will have limits so the very definition by very definition of the divine which is infinite it can't be possible that the divine is right now not in me even if those of us who want to understand logically now the power that i want to share here is i am willing in my life for the suffering i have created who willed it not the divine i willed it who can change it not the divine i will change it and when i am saying not the divine actually i am the divine the divine is sitting in me but i think we we use this as an excuse when we still don't want to move from our petty situation you know <laughs> that parmatma karega you know the divine will do because right now i am still stuck with my imaginations of how life should be what i wanted from that person maybe he still gives me you know so my dishonesties are there my insincerities are there that's what are they are keeping me stuck in the state and i think that someone out there is creating this for me so that i can learn i just want to add on that i am creating this for me so that i can learn so let us make it empowering because there is no someone out there yes there is a transcendent aspect of the divine you know who is in us and beyond us but if the divine is to be divine which is infinite limitless timeless spaceless it is not possible that i am a petty figure here and he is sitting somewhere in the brahmand you know like having joy or just looking at the leela it's not possible because then by the very definition it becomes limited the divine becomes finite so i think uh, also parallelly i would like to understand that we have the power when i want to shift i can shift right now 
and if something is not shifting right now i have to look at my own insincerities what am i wanting from this situation what are still my hopes and desires that oh maybe this person you know he agrees <laughs> or she agrees you know so let me stay here in this suffering the moment i want i can change my life millis in milliseconds it can happen such is the power residing in us even in terms of disease you know one day if i desire, decide you know maybe i am suffering with a chronic illness who is making me suffer of course i am i have created this illness for myself okay how can i change one day i decide that i want a new life for myself enough of suffering things begins to change so i think uh, this when i look at this aspect of the divine it makes me more feeling empowered i am not feeling weak that kisi aur ke hath mein chabi hai somebody else else has the key and i don't have the key if i want i can do anything i can go as deep as i want in the being and be just one with the divine presence immediately but right now why is not not that happening because i don't want that i want something else maybe more property you know more jobs more money maybe to please someone that's on my priority list finding the divine is down below somewhere wo to ho jayega you know later on later on so why am i not unified with the divine right now because my priority list i have to see you know where the divine comes where does this union come that i am seeking to be absolutely one with the divine so i just wanted to share this because many a times reading these lines are so comforting we can take a back seat and mother talks that uh, our surrender is not a passive surrender it's a very active surrender so just wanted to kind of reflect for myself and also reiterate remind myself and all of us yeah anything here before we go next so i just wanted to add that yes a very true monic a very empowering we all believe that god is the creator wo sab kuch karta hai wo create karta hai but then yeni because we haven't identified with the god within us we don't we don't believe that i am the creator i have the power because i am god too so if and accidentally we are creating subconsciously we are creating unknowingly we are creating so many things but we are unaware of it but it is very empowering that if i can create something which i have accidentally done it which i have not done it out of my awareness but suffering or whatever pain disease disharmony i also have the power to undo it so aham brahmasmi bolte to hain but uske sath identify karna to bahut aage ki baat hai but ek ek is cheez ko hum manna bhi shuru kare to shayad bahut empowering hai so aham brahmasmi the char mahavakya hai all talks about that this i i am i am divine and i i am the creator not god is the creator and i am the god but i have to i am human and i have to become superhuman and then god and so on it's a journey that for each one of us we have to take our own ways paths whatever and <laughs> discover or identify the god within us identify yeah. with that god within us yeah yes all life is yoga yoga you know hota kya hai ki jab koi hamari kaat thok dete na tab aham brahmasmi yaad nahi aata nahi aata so it's really i think that's why remembrance uh, is the key because we forget and we forget that in this very moment where uh, for example there is humiliation somebody has insulted you you know some unfortunate circumstance has happened uh, if i am i'm um, you know what you said i am aham brahmasmi you know if i am the divine 
then right now I also have the power to step back from my usual reactions and respond in a way which is my highest possibility. But I don't remember at the time of uh, the incident. That's I think that's where these mechanical habits that have come our way become our way. So that's why constantly through these sessions or whatever we are reading and the change that we want in our life, you know that whatever incident is happening today, I have two options. Either I can go down sulk with you know whatever the older pattern is, or I can take my highest possibility. Okay, what is this situation telling me? You know, let me learn from it and not react out of the older habitual pattern. So there we can exert a choice if in that moment we become aware of this will in us, you know, whatever I will, that's how the state will become. So stepping back from tendencies and choosing something higher for myself and of course, whoever is involved. Yeah, Biren, uh, Birenji, uh, were you wanting to say something? Yes. Yeah, so uh, one of the uh, points which I wanted to actually discuss because that is where, you know, I think uh, things fall apart is how do we strengthen enough will to all the time, you know, think of the divine and, and align all the five senses to it because there are too many distractions and, uh, you know, if it is not continuously done, it starts regressing. So how do you take practical steps to prevent that? That's my only point. No, I would ask you a question instead on this. Uh, say you want to keep your body clean, just the body. How would you do that? What is the yeah, starting yeah, point? Yeah. So maybe a bath or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So if you want to continue keeping the body clean, right? What, what are the necessary ingredients for that? What are the requirements that okay, I want to just continue to keep the body clean. What do okay, you think so, would be the requirements? So, okay, from a very practical point of view, take steps to prevent odor, for example, uh, you know, uh, use appropriate clothing, uh, that sort of thing. Um, don't go into too much of extreme weather or something which can, you know, disturb the body and yeah. make you start perspirating. Yeah, and take, take regular baths and all baths, that, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. why why would you put so much effort? Because <laughs> because one wants to feel good about oneself, you know, feel clean. That's about it. Exactly. One yeah. wants to. This is what I want to, wanted to focus on. You said one wants to. So if I want to now take the divine name in each aspect of my life, nothing can stop me. Right. So that want, again, you know, this is very important because the will or the aspiration is the basic root uh, in integral yoga. Mother and Shurabindo talk about the will. One has to will it. And we must be willing something or the other right now in our life. If I am not willing the divine, I must be willing something else. So we have to find out what am I willing throughout the day. And see that how much it has benefited me. So will is always involved somewhere, you would see. So nobody is with weak will. Even if I am, for example, feeling weak in the will, who is willing that weakness? I for myself. So right now I am willing weakness for myself. Why? Because it has become a habit. Now I want to will strength for myself slowly slowly i will have to take baby steps just like you said you know if i want to keep the physical body clean i will have to take baby steps and slowly strength will become a habit and the moment weakness arises it will be like dal mein kuch kala hai. you know mother says you will sense that okay something here is wanting my attention you know raising its hand and you will be able to transform it into strength very easily, weakness is nothing but a distortion of our strength. 
so we don't have to run away from weakness we have to be one with weakness and see what it is wanting to tell me for example you know not wanting to shoo away you know it is weakness shoo away not like that understanding what is weakness why am i willing weakness for me uh, see i think here also we can see there is strength because i with so much strength i am willing weakness for me <laughs> right that i am not allowing myself to move so the day i want true strength for me i would see that oh my god it is right here with me because see how weak i have made myself why because i had so much there was so much strength going on in this willing for weakness it may sound word play but if you see actually we, you will see that we have created our own situation circumstance and we can undo it the way we want it just like you said you know the day i want it baby steps mother says start from the menial you know if i want to make myself stronger okay i want to give up something so don't give up something which is very important in your life right now give up something small mother says you know take baby steps you know which you can easily let go of then maybe something difficult you know then slowly we kind of increase our strength of say giving up here in phases so that's my reflection here uh, short one uh, not not that not that short <laughs> yes birenji you want yeah, to thank you no thank <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. Anyone? Any any reflection on this? What uh, Birenji just shared? Yeah. Uh, like uh, while uh, Birenji was asking this question, uh, I was also asking the same question to myself, and uh, you know, I realized that yeah, slowly, it's such a slow process, but you know, it's a very conscious will that we put because, uh, uh, like. Uh, like i would say like uh, in my workplace when i work with small children and all uh bahut challenges aate hain and then like you know like you want to uh, always be so true to your work and uh, you know uh, be there for all the children and like i'm talking about like set of like 28 children to wo tabhi you know uh, once you come back home and then i would reflect and acha ye wo but gradually what is happening now like is that while i'm facing a challenge uh, uh there is this uh, awareness ki okay mother help me like show me the way so so ye ho raha abhi jo bahut waqt ke baad ho raha hai to wohi hai like wo i think it's a continuous practice aur abhi bhi hamesha nahi hota but kyunki wo pehle nahi hua ghar aake wo you know realization are tabhi to mere ko mujhe yaad nahi tha then agli baar us challenge ke time wo yaad rakhna to uh, it start it starts like uh, once in 10 times now the car, you know like i can say that it's more like maybe seven times out of 10 i'm able to do it so ye i think this is been when uh, virain was asking that question maybe wohi soch rahi thi ki ye ho raha hai ab mere sath like not all the time but uh, quite a few times i'm able to connect at that time and ask for help you know from mother or you know like from divine yeah Yeah, thank you for sharing, Shweta. Uh, the cleanliness of the physical, like you so beautifully, you know, art. That's the apparent, right? It like slaps us on the face. Like if you are dirty, or if somebody else is dirty, or like we're in the thing, the odor comes. Like the physical cleanliness. is very obvious but the mental dirt is not that obvious because it can be hidden so i think the first step is like how sweta was sharing that now i can see more right so when i cannot even see dirt i will not do anything to clean it but if i can see that yes there is dirt like the earlier paragraph was saying now that now you can see the origin of thing so if i am not cleaning then probably i am not seeing the dirt and yet because the dirt is there 
it's hurting me you know it's going in my nostrils i am having allergies and i am wondering why am i aller- having allergies and if i am having allergies why don't i stop going to the places where i get allergies from not realizing that i don't see that the, you know the dirt is there i am allergic to the dust and i have to clean it so i think you know how again in atisha versus they say that the supreme companionship is i think mindfulness and alertness right so again again and again just being aware and if i am believing something questioning that belief right like going till the end of things like from the root to whatever maximum i can do that okay i believe this but is that true you know is that true where is this taking me am i just the body no if i am the body then if the body drops i don't feel that you know my loved one has just gone i feel them in my heart so if it's dead how do i do that so again just small movements if i just sit with one of or two of those small movements i think and if you see you know how i think it was thai who says na if you see one thing in total awareness you suddenly see everything like just that will or the dedication i think needs to be there that i want to see and now when i'm seeing it then something just shifts right like and i think just small small practices i think that day i don't know what session we were doing and i had shared that visual that came to me that okay i'm standing in the center say on the right side the whole illusionary world that i have created you know my roles and all the relations and the buildings and stuff are there and on the left side say mother is standing who am i going towards who am i choosing and why am i not running towards her so now i keep you know that visual keeps coming back to me that this is where i have to go this is where so what so in the sense you know these small practices that we can identify with just taking out some time in our very busy popular schedule would need you know that sincerity would be needed like we have to take time to take a shower to wa- wash clothes to iron clothes just that time i think is needed and the will like you were saying yeah. yes thank you thank you sir and as you said that uh, that time has to be taken mother somebody asked mother that mother how do i remember you all the time <laughs> so she said that uh, and also i think he asked that when i am playing say lawn tennis i see that i can't remember you you know <laughs> you're just out of sight all that i see is just ball and racket and all that and mother said that when you are free in those free moments in between and we have many 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 of those free moments in between she said there you start developing this parallel consciousness of remembrance and slowly 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 it will just envelop and you know overtake your life completely so you are making use of those moments yashvita yeah so like earlier when there would be conflict uh, in me you know like uh, uh, mind only i think so uh, i mean i don't know conflict in heart or mind that i don't know but conflict inside within so that would just take over no matlab uh, it would just consume you but now as soon as like uh, i think we remembering mother has helped me personally so i remember her words like if there is a conflict inside remember that you're not being sincere so that helps me to like immediately you know offer it to mother and come back to the present moment and just it just uh, makes me feel at ease you know like okay yeah you know like uh, i can surrender this so, yeah beautiful this is, yes 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 yeah i wanted to one that the question that you said that how do i remember the mother right like there was this thing that somebody asked the mother so mother said that ask yourself how do i forget the mother right so again if i am saying that how do i remember 
the question is how do i not remember all the time like how am i forgetting because it's not a you know periodic chore that's what one has to do so i guess it has to be con- you know turned and converted ke bhoolta hi kaise hu ye nahi ke yaad kaise karu so again word play it seems but it's not yeah and i think uh, jab main bhool jata hu तब जैसे ही भूलते हैं उस मोमेंट में भूलते हैं बट वापस याद आता है कि भूल गए थे सो आई थिंक दिस इज दिस हैपन्स विद ईच वन ऑफ अस एंड फॉर फॉर मी इट हेल्प्स दैट इट इज फॉर मी टू रियलाइज दैट ओके सी दिस इज माय सॉफ्ट स्पॉट यू नो हेयर आई एम सो अटैच दैट इन फ्रंट ऑफ दैट पर्सन दैट सिचुएशन और यू नो वट पावर मनी रिस्पेक्ट फेम एनी थिंग बी एनी थिंग एनी वन स्पॉट लुक i could not remember the mother at all you know i was so overwhelmed by that happening and this is my work in this life this is my work that how do i in the middle of even that which seems so important to me now even then mother only matters you know and that thing takes a back seat so yeah i because you know it happens even if we are i was talking to a person who has been since childhood you know her father was also a mother's devout you know he would write letters to the mother asking mother about questions okay this is my question this is my problem send a telegram to the mother so everything was just mother 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 so on the objective point of view from a third person if you would wow you know what kind of a conditioning have you got that since childhood it is nothing but mother but our attached spots are so thick and dense that right now she shares that yeah i have always had visualized mother in my heart but right now the phase in my life that is going on i feel so helpless and miserable you know that irrespective of i can have mother you know it's not helping me you know i'm feel still feeling miserable still fe- so just knowing that okay right now whatever is front of me is the most attached spot that i am going through you know and i have this opportunity to now even transcend this let it go in the name of mother that which is making me so miserable so yeah you know things happen and we can't predict when would it happen maybe after 30 years of sadhana 50 years of sadhana god knows when so never say that i am done <laughs> i think that should not ever come out of our mouth that mera to ho gaya you know i am fixed and totally surrendered and nothing more to surrender because we don't know what comes next life is so large yes keeps me on ground keeps us on all on ground you know looking at this that anything can strike any time and also i think it brings out compassion in us because when we see somebody else in a stage and we have also been through such a stage you know so we see that oh it it can happen to anyone it not a matter of what degree of realization you because we keep on categorizing look so many years so many years of sadhana and all that and many a times you know i have also seen that it may even stop us uh, from seeking help you know that we don't seek out for help because oh my god you know look what would people say i have been on this path for 40 years now how can i tell them that i am suffering and that helps you know that really suffocates me in my own prison because i don't even ask for help and assistance so this can become a big burden on our head so as mother says or i think alokda also reiterates dr ranand reddy read race what taru was sharing in the beginning i love the mother the mother loves me so having only this identity for myself we are all children of the mother no sadhak no disciple is needed i am just a child of the mother i think there we are safe and child can ask for help whenever needed <laughs> but a sadhak may think whether to ask for help from her, uh, for help or not so yeah strange we are so strange at times yeah any last comments i am thinking that let us take the last le- next half next time yeah. yes birenji all the best happy journey yeah
Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Bye bye. Yes, we all have to catch a train. <laughs> Pun intended. <clears throat> Yeah, anything else, anyone, before we end? Yes, Ritu? Yeah, I think we all are already on a train. Someone's train is fast, someone is slow, but we are all traveling towards our destination. Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. बिरेन जी को बताया नहीं सर आप तो ऑलरेडी ट्रेन में हैं ट्रेन में जा रहे हैं प्राइवेट मैसेज तो वी कुड नॉट टेल हिम चलो थैंक यू एवरी वन थैंक यू फॉर बींग हेयर लिस्निंग एंड रिफ्लेक्टिंग टूगेदर हैप्पी प्रैक्टिस टू एवरी वन थैंक यू Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.